Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. And you can see how easily this outside uh, cornerback or this outside receiver can really be gone. Like I said, the only issue is the sideline. The only defender getting in my way is the sideline here. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Matt Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got some plays for you today. I'm, I'm in practice mode. I haven't done a practice mode video uh, with a new scheme in a while. Um, I've been putting out a lot of uh, full breakdowns uh, the last couple of weekends, but I'm going to put out a brand new scheme uh, that was actually given to me by a subscriber. Uh, shout out in the comment section though, George. Uh, I know he'll, he'll comment because he comments in just about all my videos. Um, he's a he's a subscriber here. He's also a Patreon member. So I'll go a little bit further for my Patreon members. Link in the description if you guys want to become one if you want to support this channel. Uh, but he basically hit me up saying that he was having trouble with a particular play. I'm going to show you that play now. It's out of the single back ace. The play at the bottom there, the Miami. He was having trouble with that play. Somebody was running that play against him religiously. Uh, so he gave me the setup, he gave me the, for the information, and uh, I looked into it, tried to find a defense for him to run. I found a couple of good defensive options for him, but truth be told, I never found a play that can stop this play stock. You pretty much have to, there's no stock defense in this game that's going to consistently stop this play at the bottom here in Miami. Uh, so I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lab up a scheme and give it to you guys. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So we're going to start off, we're going to pick the play, the Miami here. Uh, and I'm going to go defense to defense to show you guys, um, you know, the adjustments you need to make uh, as well as letting you guys know what to look for. Uh, we're going to start off with cover two and work our way back. Cover two is probably one of the most, uh, you know, that's probably one of the most run defenses. I'm going to go ahead and do it out of the big nickel. So now as far as this play goes, uh, it wasn't uh, an actual setup wasn't given to me. I came up with my own uh, and all I'm really going to do is I'm going to put the Y route and the A route on streaks. That's pretty much it. Uh, when I show you against cover threes, I'm going to be making some motions with those streaks. Uh, but ultimately, this is the setup. You don't really have to make too many changes. You can run it stock, and it'll have a pretty good effect. Uh, and it's the outside routes you're really focusing on. The streaks are just to pull coverage right now. They're, they're, they're just to pull coverage against every defense except cover three. That's the only time I'll throw to those receivers. Uh, but the reads are all about the outside receivers, the X route and the B route. You're going to break it down to the point. I mean, those routes, both of those routes beat just about every defense. The only thing that the uh, the B route has a little bit more trouble with than the X route is, um, is, is cover two. So I'm running against cover two right now. I'll show you what I'm talking about. The B route here, number one, it gets jammed. It takes a little bit more time than I want to get open. Uh, but you can see even that will have success. I really find that it really matters more like which receiver is on the open side of the field than it actually matters as far as which receiver to throw to because they both pretty much get open a lot. So like right here, I'm more towards the center of the field, the X route. If I time it properly in the break, you're going to hit that X route too. So they pretty much both get open against cover two. They're both pretty much going to get open against all the other coverages that I mentioned as well. If you throw it too late, though, that's when you're going to have a problem. Now I'm in a cover four. Uh, I'm going to skip over cover three for now because, like I said, cover three is a little bit different. But against cover four, uh, the B route is going to be a much better play. You're going to see right here, this B route, he just works inside, works his way outside. And against a true cover four, this is cover four, drop show two, whatever, that route's going to beat that. Uh, the other route, though, against cover four is not going to be as good. You're going to see how right here, like I said, that guy sits right underneath it. But you can still get it. You can see right there, if you time the throw, it's still a play. So now I'm in a man cover two. Now, as far as the man coverages go, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the outs, the X route's going to beat every man coverage. That doesn't matter if it's man like this. Man two, a lot of times the corners are pressing. That's the only thing you really have to watch out for. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. Once again, you make the throw on time. You make it when it's in its break. It's going to beat cover two man. It's going to beat cover one man. It's going to beat cover zero man. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is on the other side. Like I said, these streaking tight ends, once again, they're meant to pull back those, those deep safeties. But the B route will get jammed. So, like I said, right here, you're going to see he gets jammed, he gets pressed. He's not quite going to get that separation. I get sacked anyway. But you can see he's he's not getting away from that cornerback. If you want to change that to the point where that receiver will have success again, all you have to do is make a little motion, and now the cornerback leaves his spot, and you're going to get that same type of separation that you were getting before. So, man one, man two, man zero. These two routes on the outside, just like all the zones, those two routes on the outside will beat just about every defense. You just have to make sure that you motion this guy a little bit so he doesn't get jammed because you can see how that cornerback just basically takes off. And that's going to give you a much bigger play. 
If you want to get into some of the more unique defenses, like the cover four quarters, cover four palms, uh, we can go ahead and do that. The cover six trap is going to be very similar because half of the cover six is going to be a cover four palms. Just to show you guys what I'm talking about, once again, both receivers are going to get open here. It doesn't really matter. The X route, he just he doesn't even come close. You know what I mean? It's it's completely you know he completely whiffs. On the other side, same story. Like I said, as long as you're streaking these guys. If you don't streak them, it would be a different story. But right here, like I said, beats it completely. Could be a touchdown. If I was all the way to the one sideline, if I were to move this ball over, you can see how easily, you know, that guy just, it, it essentially acts like a man coverage. And you can see how easily this outside uh, cornerback or this outside receiver can really be gone. Like I said, the only issue is the sideline. The only defender getting in my way is the sideline here. Go ahead and let's try to get a touchdown. I'll block the running back because, like I said, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, the A-Rat looks like he's going here because it's George Kittle. Uh, but this is why I don't run cover four right here. You know what I mean? I don't run cover four palms because it's so easy to glitch. So by now, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about, how both of these outside receivers are extremely dirty uh, and they really just mess up just about every defense except cover three. I skipped cover three for a reason. I'm saving that for last. Uh, let's go and let's pick the Miami one more time. And I'm going to, I'm going to pick a cover three out of the, I, I keep using the nickel, uh, the big nickel. I'll try to use the, you know, the better pass defensive packages, but we're going to pick the cover three sky. So same setup. We're going to go ahead. We're going to run it just like this. And now you're going to see how these, these flats do a much better job of picking up these outside routes on the cover three. Like I said, cover three is really the only defense uh, that does a pretty reasonable job. We'll go to the other side now. We'll hit the B route. Like I said, they're covering that. You know what I mean? There's nothing there. So the outside routes against cover threes are pretty well taken care of. The only problem is, like I said, these streaks are now going to be an issue. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put these guys on streaks. If you were watching the previous plays, uh, if you're watching the actual, what the tight ends were doing, I'm going to run it one more time. They kind of get jammed in towards the center, or the center of the field right there. You can see how, uh, I would, that, this isn't the play, by the way, but you can see how they get pushed in towards the, uh, the, the, the safety running the deep third. That's something that I noticed since the last patch happens a lot with the cover two cornerbacks. They'll push streaks in towards the, the, the cover two safeties. So that's something that obviously was patched relatively recently. I think the last patch is when that came into the game. So there's an easy way to, uh, to change this. So if I don't want them to get jammed, and I want those outside cornerbacks to continue to react the way that they are to the outside receivers. All I have to do is motion one of these tight ends out. Now, I don't have a very fast tight end in this spot. You're going to want somebody faster, but it's not really going to matter too much. As you can see right there, we have a lane. So you can see it gets batted down. Like I said, speed's an issue. So let's go ahead and let's switch this up and let's make George Kittle the guy. Now, I put out in a previous video how where you are on the field matters when it comes to cover three defenses. So I'm going to move the ball a little bit here. You can't move the ball in game, but obviously you just have to pay attention to where you are on the field when you run these plays. So, like I said, we're going to do it with a little bit of a faster tight end now. Uh, he was breaking the cover four all by himself, uh, but ultimately you just need somebody like D Dwelly or whoever that is. He's like a he's like the speed of a fast offensive tackle, so he's not going to get the job done. So anybody over 80 speed should do the job. You don't need a George Kittle to do this, uh, but you can see right here, George Kittle is definitely getting outside for a huge one play touchdown against cover three. So cover three covers it the best and the worst at the same time. And you can make, I can make it happen with Dwelly. I'll move it over. Watch, I can do the, I can make it, I can make a touchdown with Dwelly. We're going to do that real quick. It's not just George Kittle. Dwelly can get it done, even with his slow speed. Like I said, he's below average for a tight end. He's probably a blocking tight end for all I know. Like I said, that receiver there, you look, look how he's wide open. This is like a lineman running for a 50 yard touchdown because he's that slow, but the spacing's there. That's all that matters. So it doesn't really matter which side of the field you run it on. The outside routes, the out route and uh, the route that Goodwin's running. Like I said, I don't, I'm not 100% sure of the name. It looks like a post corner or something like that. Post hitch post, I don't even know. But either way, he, the route that he's running is pulling the cornerback down. And the route that Sanders is running is pulling the cornerback down. So both of those routes are going to do enough to get these guys open up the seam. And like I said, he's obviously a very slow tight end. If I had a little bit of a faster backup tight end, uh, that would probably be a little bit easier. But you can see how both of these routes are really getting the job done. So that's play number one. You can see how this play is pretty unstoppable. Uh, it can score home runs. 
Like I said, if your opponent figures out the cover three does a better job of stopping the outside receivers, he's just opening himself up for home run touchdowns at the tight ends. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vid there on just one play. I wanted to do an entire scheme, but I kind of ran long on time. So if you want to see part two, the rest of this scheme, some run plays and some more pass plays tomorrow, let me know in the comment section or hit the like button. Uh, if it gets, you know, a good amount of likes, I will put that out Sunday for sure. And that's it. So other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.